Week 7, Problem 11. An experiment designed to measure the Earth's magnetic field using the Hall effect. Mm. A copper bar, 0.5 centimeters thick, is positioned along an east-west direction. Assume 8.46 times 10 to 28 electrons per cubic meter. And the plane of the bar is rotated to be perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. If a current of 8 amps in the conductor results in a Hall voltage of this, what is the magnitude of the Earth's magnetic field? All right. So, the way we're going to go with this guy is I'm going to start by drawing a picture and writing an equation and going from there. So, let's draw a picture. All right. Oh, I wonder what color I have. Blue. And no. I can do it better. I can use a real square. A real square. There we go. Make it thick? Yeah, make it thick. Hmm. I was hoping for blue. There we go. All right. So the idea here is we have a current. Current should be red. Going this direction. And what we're going to have is I'm going to say that there's um, positive charges and negative charges moving. Though really, oh, it's only negative charges. And we have a magnetic field that's perpendicular. I'm going to say the magnetic field just for the sake of argument is going into the board. So this will be the magnetic field. So we got and I'm going to say actually here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say that the current is positive charges moving in the positive direction. So oh, there we go. Current's moving that way. So what we're going to have is V hmm wait a sec yep so we have current moving this direction. So we're going to do force equals QV cross B, like we've done the whole time. So force equals QV cross B. There we go. Perfect. So we have V, V cross B. So the force is going to be up. So what's going to happen is these poor little electrons, hmm, mis <laughs> mysteriously positively charged electrons, are going to be forced upward because there's going to be a force upward on them. Up, because V cross B upward. So we're going to get is going to all these positive electrons up here. I think the technical term is positrons. And then there's not actually positrons here. Uh, when I say uh, positive charges moving in a positive direction. It's just because that's the easiest way to draw current. So really, if I want to be more accurate, what I say is um, all we have are electrons, but um, the positive charges are really just an absence of electrons. So when you talk about voltage, there really is no such thing as a zero. All you're doing is comparing one thing to another thing. It's always a difference. All right. So what happens is our positive electrons go up. We have our negative electrons. So we do V cross V cross B again, but it's negative, so they go down. And so we get all the negative charges down here, all the positive charges up there. So what we do then is we take a voltmeter. Yellow. God, this is always the hard part. All right. Take our voltmeter, put one guy up here. Go around the magnetic field over here. We have a delta. We have a voltage. We have a box around it. Bam. What we do is we measure a voltage. So we have this current, there's a magnetic field, and it creates a voltage difference across the bar. And then we have a thickness here too, which they gave us. Oh, add some perspective. So what, 0 0.5? 0 0.5 meter? 0.5 centimeters. This guy will be 0 0.5 centimeters. All right, which will be five millimeters, which would be five times 10 to the negative third meters. All right, and they want us to find the magnetic field of the Earth. Okay, well, they mentioned current, so I'm gonna use the fire incinerates little bunnies equation. So I'm gonna say F equals I L cross B. Does that work? Maybe. Hmm. 
Actually, I gotta go back and use the F equals um, there we go EQ plus QV cross B. I think the uh, fire incinerates little bunnies equation would work, but just in case, I'm gonna try and go this direction. So we have what we're gonna have here is we're gonna have a magnetic force because we have moving charges pushing these guys away. And then we're gonna have an electric force that's created by these charges because they're, you know, they're separated that uh, pulling things apart. And we're gonna reach a steady state. So what's gonna happen is this force is gonna equal zero. When you look at this, you're like, but all the positive charges at the top, all the negative at the bottom, well, they're not all. It's like there's there's intermingled, you know, negative charges up here and there's positive charges down here. We just have more positive charges up top, more uh, negative charges at the bottom. So there, and there's just enough so that the electric force right here on the charges is equaled out by the magnetic force. All right. So we're going to say that then EQ equals QV cross B. And we're talking about the same charges here. So the Qs are going to cancel. And we're going to be left with E equals V, cro v cross B. And V and B are perpendicular, so I'm just going to call it VB. I'm going to draw a little arrow on top of the V there, just so we know that it's voltage, all right, velocity, and specifically not voltage. All right, so they don't give us electric field, they give us a uh -huh, voltage, a whole voltage. So from previous knowledge and knowings, we know that we can write kind of sort of uh, electric field in terms of voltage, especially if we look at think of this kind of as like a parallel plate capacitor scenario. There we go. Ooh, that's really well written. Nice. Good for me. Right, where D is this guy right here. D. Oop. Top, bottom. There we go. Alright, so now we need to find what the voltage is. Or not voltage, velocity. Velocity. Gosh, I am setting you guys up for failure. Alright, so we know what the amps are. And amps are kind of like, sort of like a velocity. It's a current. So current is like water flowing through the river. And if you know how fast the current's going, you know how fast the water's going, maybe? I don't know. I'm going to go with this and see what happens. It could be a waste of your life. Might be. Real ch reasonable chance. All right, 6.241 times 10 to the 18th uh, electrons per second. OK. So I'm going to say 8 amperes. So we have 8 amperes. Oh. And then we're going to multiply by 6.241. 6.241 times 10 to the 18th. And that is electrons per second. Electrons uh, at the end of the board per second. And that's going to be per ampere. OK, got it. So now we need to get rid of the electrons. So let's do some dimensional analysis. And we have 8.46 times 10 to the 28th. So I'm going to do 8.46 times 10 to the 28th electrons per cubic meter. All right, now I want to get this cubic meter to be um, meters because we're looking for a speed. Velocity, speed, we're looking for a speed. So we're going to divide by, let's see, we've got a thickness here, 0.5 centimeters. So I'm going to call, so I'm going to do multiply by 1 over 5 times 10 to the negative third meters. And then I'm going to, we need one more distance here. And I'm just going to call that a distance, 1 over d distance. So 
way, the way you can think of it is you start with a cubic meter, which is this whole slab. It's the volume of this slab. And what we got to do is re remove two dimensions. And whichever dimension, whichever two dimensions we remove, they won't be counted. Hmm. That's kind of redundant. Anyway, so the idea here is the dimension that we want is... I don't want cute green. Let's go orange. The dimension we want is this direction. So if we remove this guy right here, which is the thickness, and this guy right here, the distance... No, I can draw it better than that. Uh, almost. No, not quite. This guy right there, then all we're left with is this one, which is what we want to use for the velocity. So I'm just going to leave it as 1 over d. All right, let's do some canceling real quick. Make sure we're at least kind of sort of on the right track. And oh, this will get, this is measured in meters. So that's going to cancel one of those guys. Electrons go away. Amperes go away. And all we're really left with is meters per second. Now, if I was a better math guy, I'd wait till the end to start canceling, uh, calculating things, but I'm not going to. So this is 10 to the 10th. Uh, oh. Oh. So 10 to the negative seventh on the bottom, which is the same as 10 to the seventh on the top. Yeah, let's go with this. So 8 times 6.241. Don't need to be that accurate, but I'm going to anyway. Divided by, I think it was 8.46. And we'll divide by another 5. So 1180. That seems awfully large. Ah, it's supposed to be a point. 1.18. Okay. Equals. 1.18 and that's times 10 to the 7th and it's still divided by D whatever D happens to be hmm let's see if that in any way makes sense because that's supposed to be like the drift velocity which seems awfully high I think that's supposed to be negative 7 so this was, yep, right. All right, so I'm going to redo these calculations for the exponents here. So we got 10 to the 18th. So we should have 10 to the 10th on the bottom. So we should minus 3 to 10 to the negative 7th. Oh, maybe. Or 10 to the 7th, positive 7th. So on the top, we will then have 10 to the negative 7th. OK. That seems like a reasonable drift velocity. And it'll probably actually get bigger because I assume d is less than a meter. So it'll be like dividing by a number less than one. Okay. So I can, I'm good with that. I'm cool with that, as they say. All right. So now, what are we even looking for? Oh, magnetic field. All right. So I'm going to rewrite this guy real quick. Yeah, that's about right. Pen. Therefore, magnetic field equals voltage divided by d times velocity okay now this is where we're going to shine so voltage is 6 times 10 to the negative 12 divided by d and velocity which is 1.18 times 10 to the negative 7th 1.18 times nope times 10 to the negative 7th yeah I'm good at that over d the d is now cancel which is good because I wouldn't have known what to do with it the 10 to the negative 7th on the bottom cancels a bunch of these, so we get 10 to the negative 5th on the top. And we're going to have 6 divided by 1.18. I'll do 6 divided by. It's going to be like 5. No. There we go. Let's do it that way. 
5.08. So we're going to have 5.08 times 10 to the negative fifth. And this is Tesla's. Yeah. And to convert that to micro Teslas, we're going to multiply by 10 to the sixth. So we'll do 50.8 micro Teslas. That's a terrible micro. But it's okay, we got it. 50.8. Fifty point eight micro Teslas. All right. Yeah, I think we're good with that one. Yep. Hmm. I kind of. I think I kind of made that one look easy, but there is not. That isn't necessarily an easy problem. The best way to go through this one is you start by drawing a picture. You draw a picture. You look at what cancels out. You write up whatever formula kind of comes to mind. Um, we saw electric field, we saw velocities, so I wrote up the force equation, especially since we knew that we had a magnetic force, electric force, oh, there we go, force electric. So I wrote up the force equals EQ plus QV cross B, okay, good, uh, we knew the force equals zero, we then had E equals velocity times magnetic field, um, we then know that the um, velocity is going to come from the amperage. Amperage will then tell us how much uh, voltage, or how, much, how fast the electrons are moving, the drift velocity, which is small, like 10 to the negative 7 type, small. Um, we then convert an electric field into a voltage, because we know it can do that, because it's basically like a parallel plate capacitor right there. What we're doing is creating one, kind of, sort of, more or less. And then we just started plugging in numbers until we got a number that was reasonable. And then we got 50.8 micro Teslas, which actually seems fairly reasonable for the Earth's magnetic field, because I think the Earth's magnetic field is between like 40 and 60 micro Teslas. So that's very reasonable. All right. Hope that helped you. See you on 5.08.